Hey, it's Ashley and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. Today we are going to be taking my client's hair and doing a nice kind of push back on the sides, shorter on top, and I'm going to show you how to achieve this look. So let's get into it. I'm going in with my number five and I am just taking off all of this hair, all this bulk out of my way. We are going for a shorter cut. I'm going to do some clipper work on the back of the head. I'm going to use mostly my shears on the side to get a really nice smooth blend. So you definitely want to go ahead and just take off your bulk before going in with anything else and trying to get this haircut situated. I also didn't pin up the top of the head because I do want to remove majority of this length up here. And as you can see, my client enjoys his long hair. So he was telling me, let's just keep these bangs. And I'm like, N indeed not. So... We're going to continue going in with this four. Now that I got most of that bulk removed, I'm going in and getting my guide set up for where I really want these clippers to stop at. So that's going to be right behind the ridge of the occipital bone of the head. And that way you're going to have a really nice dip in this haircut. That's going to keep a pushback look, keep these calyx that he might have in the back of the head down and just give an all over smooth transition from this longer hair on top to the short clipper cut on the back. Now going in on the sides, I'm gonna clean up a little bit more and I'm moving that length out of my way just so I don't take too much of it off. I do wanna keep a flow going. So now I'm going in with a number six just to kind of keep that debulking on the ears and by the sideburns. So this is gonna allow me to keep a more tight cut Whenever I'm going in with my shears, I'm going to have a nice guide to go around. And I'm just explaining this to him because he kind of wanted to go all in and chop some hair off. And I was just explaining that we don't have to do that. We can leave a good combination of the two haircuts. So here I am going in with that number six. And I'm just kind of going right around the ear, keeping the three bottom teeth of my clippers that are closest to the ear on the head. And then planing off on the other clipper guard. So that way it can give a nice shape and start to blend myself in. Now, I like to do all of my dry work before my wet work so no hair is sticking to my client or to me. So we are going to go in and trim up around the ears, giving these really nice lines, keeping them a little bit lower hanging because we don't want a white wall. And I'm using my comb to really guide me through with this haircut i'm taking you know the hair that's kind of sitting underneath itself and pulling that out to really get the correct shape of his hairline so as you can see i'm using my other hand to keep the ear out of my way and using probably the corner of my trimmers to just clean up around the ear and give that nice c shape it does take a little more time when you have longer hair you're kind of creating your shape and perimeter around but it all comes out really nice. So taking the time really helps. As you can see, I'm just taking the sideburn down. I am angling it and then kind of straightening out and giving a nice clean outline. Normally the sideburns are where men struggle to really keep cleaned up themselves. They're not sure if it's a beard or hair or what to do with it. So I like to taper them down on a clean shaven face so that they don't have to worry about it until their next haircut. So you can see, I'm just giving some more detail into this sideburn. I think it's really important. It's a major part of their face. And so they should have nice, smooth sideburns that taper down into their clean shaven face. Now I'm gonna turn the client so that you can see a little bit better. I'm going in and just using where I rounded that ear out and I'm taking that edge and I'm just following it all the way down. I am not making a very big like point to the back of their neck, I'm trying to not make it look like a tiny back of the neckline. Um, you wanna keep all of the client's natural shape in the back of the neck. You want to make sure that your line is pretty straight and square. You don't wanna be going in towards the client's neck and giving them like a tiny triangle back of the neck. You definitely wanna keep everything pretty concise with their natural shape. Now in doing this, their grow out is gonna be a lot better because it's not going to be overgrowing in areas you chopped off that were supposed to be there. So just continuing through, now you can see the back of his neckline is very heavy and I really prefer to taper out my client. So here we are tapering out my client's neckline, 
I started out with my number one because this is a longer clippered haircut, so we're not going to go full in zero. And then I'm just opening that one, and then I'm going to switch myself to a one and a half after closed. And so I work from one side to the other. You can see I'll go in after I get that one shaped out and use my no guard and half just at the edge. I'm just barely tapping in to that number one. And this way I don't really have to go back with a half guard or anything else. So now I'm going to go and just make sure that one taps right into that half guard and then just open it and keep that nice consecutive look. So instead of me going in and going one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, um, to get me back to that natural, like where I started with my guard, I am going to use this one and a half going right underneath the ridge of the occipital bone. I'm going to bevel it out. And then in doing so, I'm going to be able to come back in with my sheer over comb or even my thinning shears and just lightly tap out that weight line and have it look so seamless into that number six that there was no need to ever fade anything higher than that one and a half. So worrying about that after, I'm gonna go in and start blending in this longer haircut. I'm grabbing my hair at a 45 degree angle and I'm finding my guide, which was my number six, as you can see. And then I am cutting everything into that 45 degree angle, slowly leaving more of a angle towards the front of the face where I want the bangs to stay a little bit longer. I did clip the bangs out of my way so that I can leave them to the top when I am cutting. This is gonna be not a disconnected haircut. As you can see, I am taking everything in the parietal ridge and blending. So we're gonna have just a flowier blend and I wanted to make sure that I had those bangs out of my way since they were a lot longer. Sometimes I'll cut the bangs first before going in and blending just so I know the length I'm going to. But since I didn't do that, I did pin them up out of my way. Now you can see the back of the head, we're gonna have a lot more length here to blend. And he does have a calic, so I'm not going to take it as tight as the sides. So we're going to leave a bit more of an angle. And you can see I'm blending out that taper right here. Just going in with my scissors over comb. Coming out at an angle and blending that one and a half into that six just seamlessly. And then we don't have to touch it again. We don't have to think about it again. It's completely blended on that taper. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the head. I'm going to go in and blend in that length at a 45 degree angle, coming back towards the back of the head where that calyx sits. And that's going to be a good guide for my top. So all of this sets up the top of the head for me. You can see I'm just working that 45 degree angle a little bit higher than I did previously now that I'm in the back of the head towards that calyx, like I said. And I'm just going to take off any more corners that I'm seeing pop out, make sure that all the weight is displaced well, and then making sure we get some of that weight out of here since that haircut was so much longer beforehand. But leaving some to where this cowlick he has doesn't stick straight up whenever his hair is cut. And I started cutting this client's hair about six months ago this is a new journey for me and him um i was keeping up with his longer haircut so he came in with this and i was pretty shocked but excited so we are doing a nice cut he did give me some references for the top to be a little rhino rhino ryan reynolds style and he said he wanted his bangs not in his face, not falling down, so you might be a little nervous, but right here, I just went in, twist it, and then cut. This twist is going to help give some length on the sides to where that pushback isn't so crazy. Um, and as you can see, the middle was shorter than the sides, which is what I wanted, because I just want a little more swoosh, and I am going to cut the length. So now, going in from my guide I just created, we are taking a mohawk section straight throughout the back. And then continuing through with this mohawk section, I am grabbing and cutting. I am keeping a slight angle. I want the front of my hair to be lightly shorter than the back of my hair. Now you would think you would want your bangs longer. And in some cases you do, but not in this haircut. And I'm going to explain why. So right here we have a cowlick. <clears throat> now, if I would go shorter back here on this cowlick, 
his hair would stick straight out. And if I would go longer in the front, it would over direct and sit too heavy on his top. So by me taking a little bit more length off of the front of the bangs and leaving more length in the crown of the head, I am gonna create a shape that fits his head shape and sits perfectly with the length and style of his hair. So you can see I'm going from that mohawk section. Now I'm gonna follow my guide to the back of the head. We're not gonna have much left to cut. We did already blend our sides in and cut this mohawk section pretty wide. So I'm gonna point cut to give some texture and I am not leaving any extra length on the sides. I am literally cutting everything to my mohawk section. You can see. So my mohawk section should start to round out into a 45 degree back to the cowlick of the head and I should be able to clean that really precise back into what I blend it with my number six guard. So you can see here, we're cutting our last corner on the side of the head. After I do this side, my haircut is pretty much done besides some cleanup work. So I'm grabbing what's left over and cutting these corners. So everything should be blended from the sides and everything should be blended on the top the last thing to do is make them meet together and blend on these last few corners. So that's what we're gonna do. And as you can see, that gives a very smooth, pushed back look that flows with the head shape. So we are gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna use that mohawk section and I am going to cut my hair to that mohawk section length and then cutting and following it all the way back into that cowlick area of the back of the head of the crown. And then I'm just following it through. I continue doing this until I am finished with meeting my mohawk section guide. And then I start to go into my 45 degree angle, making sure I knock the corners off at the parietal ridge of the head and I'm using that guide on both my sides from my mohawk section and from what I created before I started cutting the top. Now, these are the last touches of my haircut. I don't have to keep going back in and making sure I cut something else. This is a haircut. All we have to do is wash it and double check our client and make sure he loves everything as much as I do. He was a little nervous about the middle of his head kind of popping up because he's had this problem with other haircuts. So you can see him telling me that. And I'm like, let's just wash it. Um, your hair is a little shocked after. And then if we wanna cut more, I'm happy to cut more always. So always let the client play with it. This was a big change. He probably hasn't had a different haircut since probably about six years. So now I'm going in and blow drying some of that water out. I am gonna blow dry him all the way out. He does like a fluffier look. Not everyone does. Um, I think it's a good look, just depending on how you like your hair. And I can tell he really likes it. He's kind of excited about everything. He was saying he was worried about this and he's cut it off himself before, but he's not seeing that there's the same problem. And that is because we took our time and left that length in the back of the cowlick. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna style his hair with a light paste and I hope you enjoyed this haircut transformation just as much as I did. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And I hope to see you back soon, guys. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day.